Um, as you probably already know, but I'm here teaching you how to ning the mong, how to read mong, read and write it. And so this is probably what most of the non-natives have been waiting for, the, the tones, but I cannot stress to you how important it is that natives learn the tones themselves because honestly, after I was done being a missionary and I, I write to people in mong, some of the people that I met on my mission, they they don't use their tones very properly. They they spell things out a little bit wrong. I can still understand it, but it's just a little bit choppy and it makes it a little bit more difficult to read. I can understand it if I make effort, but using the tones is super, super important because there are eight tones in Hmong. And if you say one word eight different ways, it's going to mean eight different things. It doesn't mean every word has eight different meanings, but it just means you can screw things up if you do not use the right tone. Okay, so I'm going to read through them real quick. So there's the B, the the no tone one that you just leave off. You don't put any consonant on the end. An S, an M, a V, a J, a G, and a D. And so these tones are put on the end of the word. Like you see this right here, nyang. The M is on the end of the word. That means it's the ji nie tone, okay? So you want to learn how to pronounce that. The V is a rising tone. It's on the end of that word right there, the N-T-A-W. Okay, so it's rising. And then the B is a high tone, like on the H-M-O-O-B. Mong, mong, mong. All right, so I'm going to go through and pronounce them real quick. So it is ji xie, ji wa, ji mong, ji nie. Ji go, ji do, ji neng, ji da. Okay, I hopefully I hope that you kind of got the gist of it with me going through it like that. So I'm gonna show you the tone chart right here. All right, so I made a chart. So it's it's in order of high to low. So the highest being the top one, the B right there, and then below it's the the no tone, and then the S down there. Those are like your voice range, high, mid, low. Right. Sorry, I gotta get comfortable in my chair right here. Okay, so a B. A B is high. I'm gonna over exaggerate this tone, okay? For all the non natives. It might get annoying to the natives, and I'm I apologize for that. But it is shia, 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 shia. You can see how my voice has this tone right now, and then out of nowhere I say shia, shia, my tone went up. Did you hear it? Shia, shia. It's a little bit higher than normal. Okay, so that's a high tone. And then there's this tone right here, the one right in the middle of the screen. It's the no tone. Ji wa 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 wa. You can you can see that there's no consonant on the end of the word. That means it's a flat tone. It's your it's your neutral tone. How you normally speak without any infractions on your voice. And so that one can be kind of difficult for some people. I don't know why, but it should be easy for you. The S is the low tone. See down here it's low. And so, just like in this word, ki mu, 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 mu. I talk like this, and then I don't know where I say mu, mu, mu. See? It's a lower tone. And so, the S goes on the end of the word. Mu means to go. And so, pronounce that correctly, it's it's your lower tone. Okay, so, shia, shia, shia. Ua, ua, ua. Moo, moo, moo. Hopefully you could hear the differences in the tone. All right, so the N. That one's kind of difficult for some people. I describe it as a short stop tone. Um, right after you pronounce the word, you kind of just pff, cut it off. You cut the word off and you don't pronounce it further. Um, you just don't drag out that tone. I mean, once you get good at the language, you can kind of drag it out at the same time, like make the tone, but that's more difficult to do. Right now, just cut off the word as quickly as possible. Nia, nia, nia. You don't say nia, nia. You say nia, 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 nia. You kind of cut it off. All right. You kind of get the idea, and it's it's in your lower voice range too. Nia, nia, nia. All right. Continuing on, is a V is um from your neutral range pretty much you rise. So this is really, really like, kind of like when you ask a question in English, at the end of the sentence, you kind of raise your voice like this. 
uh, like that, kind of showing that you're asking a question. It's you're raising your voice a little bit as you go. So, go, go, like that. You're raising it. Go, go, go. And so, raise your tone for the V. Uh, J. J is a, a high falling tone. High falling tone. I'm going to exaggerate this one. So that says ki. Ndo. 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 You can kind of hear how it starts up high like ndo. Ndo. But you take it one step further and go ndo. 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 Um, in English, that's pretty much equivalent to like commanding someone to do something when you're angry or something. Um, just imagine yelling at somebody and telling them to do something and you're almost always using that that J tone when you say the last word in the sentence. Uh, it's, it's like you're commanding someone to do something. Do! Like, do your laundry! Do your laundry! Something like that when you're commanding someone. Do! Do! Do you hear what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> Moving on. So the G tone, the G tone, <laughs> G tone. Anyways, the G tone. Um, some Americans, English speakers that know nothing about Hmong, they kind of make fun of that tone for some reason, because it's kind of it's it's strange, it's different for an English speaker, but it's it's a part of Hmong, and you're gonna have to get used to that. Um, and so it's pronounced D nang 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 nang. Nang. I'm remember I'm exaggerating this natives. <laughs> um, nang is pretty much how I normally say it. Nang, but nang. You're breathing out. You're kind of going ah, as you're saying the word nang, nang, and it's normally in the lower tone. Sometimes you can hear it higher. It really doesn't matter. But as long as you're going ah, like that and breathing out with it, exasperating. I don't know how to explain it. And then the and then the D, the infamous D, the thaw, thaw. So a D is an also another rising tone, but you start from your low tone. Thaw, 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 deep thaw, deep thaw. Okay, so just practice your low tone and then just rise with it. Thaw. Okay, and I'll explain why a D is so controversial uh, later. And so I wrote out some some sentences right here, and I'm going to read them so you can see the tones. And I'm going to read them exaggerated, and I'm going to read them non-exaggerated. And so first the exaggerated. Go, ba, ba, do, ba, ba, ba. <laughs> I like that sentence. And so the, the non-exaggerated is go, ba, ba, do, ba, ba, ba. Okay. And so that means I saw Pao's grandma, ba ba. I don't really know how to translate ba ba very well because it's a game. But ba means to toss and ba means ball. So toss ball, throw ball, doesn't matter. But it's a, it's a traditional Hmong game that kids do at New Year's. Um, the next sentence is... Hello, my name is Yamoa. Uh, so non-exaggerated. That's pretty fast. Too. I'm reading it really fast. So I'm sorry. All right. So you guys starting to pick it up? Yay, nay, whatever. Let me know. And then this last sentence. Nu chi sa to vi nu chi bao ling di no di. Do you, hopefully you guys are starting to get the tones. I'll make another video explaining this, this D right here, why it's controversial once again. If you guys want to practice, let me know. I'd be happy to help out. All right, see you guys. Hope this helped you out.